Well, welcome back to another Run Disney Rundown. We have Marathon Weekend registration coming up here in just over two weeks. And we get lots of questions about should I do Dopey? How do I do Dopey? Why do I do Dopey? <laughs> so we thought we would take the time before registration happens, before you drop the money and commit to running 48 miles to kind of breaking everything down Dopey, talking about why you would, wouldn't want to do it, the training involved, why you may want to consider doing just the marathon, and also answer basically any of your questions that you have about Dopey or even Marathon Weekend in general. So we will jump right into it. Uh, as I said, though, we are live. If you do have questions, feel free to put them into the comments. If you asked questions on Facebook or Instagram, we have all of those up. We will be going through those kind of as they come up as well. Otherwise, welcome to the show and let's do it. So they just uh, dropped the themes for the 2025 marathon weekend in this past week that we're um, recording this slash live with this. And it's always very exciting when themes are dropped, and that's usually what gets a lot of folks interested and in talking about doing any race weekend, but particularly Dopey. Um, Dopey is definitely, I would say, the most challenging thing that Run Disney offers, being that it's the marathon included with that, and it's a big deal. And it's gotten more and more and more popular as social media has um, introduced it to lots of new folks, um, but it is not a easy feat. <laughs> no, absolutely <laughs> not. And again, that is why we are here. You know, all of the other challenge, yes, they are challenging. Uh, we certainly do not want to discredit the achievement of any half marathons, uh, glass slipper challenge, springtime, wine and dine, but the dopey challenge and goofy and challenge goofy. and just the marathon, for a matter of fact, are really a whole other level. Yes, exactly. Um, we have um, many things that we're going to go into as far as considerations that we thought folks should keep in mind if they're trying to decide to whether to do Dopey. Um, it's going to be probably geared towards a lot of people's first Dopey, but some of these two, especially ones regarding your time and your schedule could be if you are a return dopey runner um, or a uh, you've done the marathon and now you're trying to do dopey type situation so that is not the page i meant to share oh <laughs> so i was going to show the themes which i will get to here right. in just a second but yeah anyways though um <laughs> <laughs> Steve says, uh, registering is the greatest challenge. It's yes, up there. It I is. don't know if I would say it's the greatest one. Because <laughs> running 26 miles is very hard. <laughs> running 26 miles is very hard. Um, there Got we it. Go. There we go. That's the right page that we were <laughs> looking for here. Um, so we do have this nostalgic theme. You can see, I won't harper on this too much but you know typically people see the themes and that is one of the things that says oh i'm in or sometimes they say oh i'm out that's what got me to do the only dopey i've done so far but the themes like pushed me over the edge i was already considering it i had done the marathon the year before and i was trying to decide i knew i wanted to do at least the marathon and and try to improve from my first one but when they dropped those 90s themes i was on board <laughs> Um, and obviously I had Lake next to me telling me that I could do it because I'm one where I will tend to think I shouldn't do something and can't do something and he's a very realistic cheerleader, I would say. Yes, and again, we are not your decision maker. Uh, we are certainly not here to put anyone down or tell anyone they can't do it. We are very much of the demographic that yes, we believe you can do it. Yep. We're going to show you some of the tools of how to do it, how we've done it, and then you can take that 
information and make your own decision from there. Uh, before we get into that, though, I will. Katie just mentioned she's ran Dopey once, and then she has also run the Walt Disney World Marathon as her first marathon Standalone. the year before that. Um, I have run Dopey twice. I've done the Walt Disney World Marathon as my first marathon as well. I, that was a couple years before that, and I have done the Eugene Marathon as well. Um, so that is obviously, though, if you follow the channel, you know our Run Disney accolades basically is every weekend, every challenge for the most part. Yeah. We've knocked off our coast to coast this year already. <laughs> Um, and we have been traveling around doing a lot of other cool, fun races and have plans to do a lot of other cool, fun races, more marathons and such down the road. Yes, yes. So, um, so getting into it, I will say at this point from approximately this date, end of March, there's about nine months until Marathon Weekend 2025, and it is my belief as someone who is not a particularly, I'd say, talented runner, but is a motivated and uh, enthusiastic runner, <laughs> that I think almost anyone could start from this point and get to a marathon goofy or dopey if they give it the time and the consistency and uh, can realistically fit training into their life. Um, so if that's your hold up, if you just think you cannot do it no matter what, I would encourage you to listen to some of the things we're gonna go over, um, really think about what your uh, schedule looks like for you in the coming year. And if it's something that you know you feel empowered to, to tackle, do it because Tackling a marathon, dopey or goofy or something you feel like is almost impossible and then accomplishing that is just the most amazing feeling. And it can really empower you in all areas of your life, I think. Absolutely. Yeah. And like I said, we are pro. You can do it. <laughs> you have plenty of time to build a base. Um, I know me personally, while training, especially if you're following the Jeff Galloway plan, you're looking at almost 30 weeks of training uh for me personally or really for katie as well when you have a base your marathon training is a much smaller block yeah. uh when i trained for eugene my eugene was in the end of april my marathon training started basically the beginning of february so it was february march and april um and now that was a very long almost three months <laughs> but not all of that training is or training of that 30 week period is necessarily marathon training it is a lot of base building um mm -hmm. just getting out there getting the miles in uh getting that time on your feet and then once you start to hit a little bit closer and your long runs are hitting over that half marathon then you're really digging into the marathon training um i do want to backtrack just a little bit uh, talking about one of the reasons that you may or may not decide to do dopey or just do a marathon. Yeah. Shouldn't say just do a marathon. Do the marathon instead of doing dopey. Uh, the other piece of information that comes out when they release the races or the race themes was they also released the pricing. Um, well, this is one of the reasons that I had listed to keep in mind when you're looking at doing any run Disney uh, race, but particularly Dopey, because it is the most expensive. <laughs> yes. Now, Dopey includes the most races that you are going to get out of a challenge, which is awesome. We love that. It is the most expensive product that Run Disney offers. Other than Platinum Club Run Disney and maybe Gold. I don't know. That is fair. We don't really know about those. <laughs> Ones that actually get you a physical event. Um... Yes, the Dopey Challenge, and let me pull that up here as well. But the Dopey Challenge this year is $688 before fees. Basically comes out to $700. Well, oh, that includes the 6.6 .6 platform. Oh, service. I'm sorry. <laughs> yes, $688 after the fees. Yeah. Which still, that is a lot of money. 
Um, now, in comparison, the marathon itself is two hundred twenty-six dollars, which is only two more dollars than the half marathon. And of course, you can always stick with your five Ks, ten Ks in the one twelve and one hundred fifty-five range. I love a ten K. I think it's a great race. <laughs> great value. <laughs> yes, Dopey is expensive. Even Goofy is expensive, but another less expensive option um, and still a great challenge. Yep. Neither of us will discredit Goofy. Obviously, the Dopey challenge includes the Goofy challenge, but the Goofy challenge is the hardest part of the Dopey challenge, the half and the full. <laughs> I think the perception, though, is if you're going to go and pay all this money and do the two hardest races, you might as well tack on the two easy ones. Reasons you may not, though, you are also, for the most part, paying for lodging and travel. Yep. You know, if... It's five... Basically, you need five days of a hotel if you're planning on being at the expo before the 5K, which we encourage you to do everything you can to get there. Um, and not rely on morning of pickup because that's never guaranteed. <laughs> um, so you'll need at least five days of hotels, five days of food away from home that you're probably paying for, trying to bring with you, all those other little travel things. So doing one of these weekends is a investment, which is another reason why we encourage people to really be prepared for it so that you can really get the most out of the all this money that you're spending um and for personal reference like you know obviously that is a lot of time some of it falls over the weekend i usually always just plan a week of basically vacation pto whatever your work calls it right uh, because on top of needing to get there early you need some time to recover from a marathon i don't know about you i don't really want to go to work that monday after running 48 I mean miles I've done it. After my first my first marathon, I still worked my office job and I did go in the next day and I was very sad and sore and had blisters and such. So a rough day would have been nice, but you know. I'm going to pop this question up here and then Miss Wendy, if you are still in the chat, I would love a little bit of input from you because you are probably one of our you are educated on this subject. <laughs> uh, I feel like the marathon is impossible. Is it worth it to do the marathon if I DNF? Uh, I've done two halves, just a can slow runner. Answer? Yeah, you can absolutely. <laughs> okay, so first off, if you have done two half marathons and you've completed those and your pace is 16 minute miles or less, I 100% believe that you can actually finish a marathon, um, especially if you train for those two halves and you have an idea of what a training schedule looks like. Um, this harkens back to what I said at the beginning of the show where we have nine months. Nine months is a really, really good amount of time to start building a base, start getting um, used to a training schedule. So three to five days a week, of training of runs different types of runs and long runs if you have a base pace let's say when i did my first one my pace was about a 15 minute mile because i run walk not fast i took my 13 mile pace that i was very used to from 10 years of running half marathons and every time i had a long run i added a mile or two to my long run and because you're building it slowly, you know, you keep about the same pace. You're just adding the miles on and you're teaching your body what it feels like to go a little bit more. So I would try to maybe not plan to DNF. There's nothing wrong with DNFing a race. It's there. You get your medal. You, you did the best you could, but try to go into it thinking you can do it. <laughs> <laughs> and believing you can do it, I would say. I agree. I mean, like I said, we are coming from the place that we believe you all can do it. You know, we want to encourage you to do it. Um, the marathon is a great challenge. Um, like I said, I've, especially if it's your first marathon, I am a big proponent of don't do dopey for your first marathon. And I've got quite a few comments. I, when I did put these posts out, I said, hey, for our veterans, what what is your advice 
quite a few people said, if it's your first marathon, just let it be your first marathon. Uh, your first marathon, like I said, great, great challenge. But if you're used to halves, it is hard. Yeah. It is double the distance of a half marathon. It's, it's a more, it's a, obviously you're out there longer than a half. It's more of a strain on your body and your legs and your lungs, but it's also a mental game. There's, your brain goes, can go a little crazy when you're out there and it is, I don't even, it's hard to describe kind of that feeling once you get mile 18, 19 is usually where I start to feel different <laughs> than all the other races before. Um, but that's what the, that, that's really what the training is for. Um, and the training also, as you, especially as you get in those higher miles, gives you a lot of confidence going into the race. There's still that scary, can I do it feeling, especially if you've never done it before. But even when I did Dopey after I did the first marathon, I still felt that, um, those nerves, but I knew that I had good training. I knew that, um, I had done as much work as I could and it was a good amount of work and there was a good chance. So especially for the slower folks out there, I am one of you and don't try to try to, you know, believe in yourself a little bit more because I understand how it can get he, he's he's heard me talk about how I can get really down myself and scared of not being able to accomplish it. Yeah, marathons are hard and your first marathon, regardless of if it's dopey or not, is a deconstructive process. Yeah. I have learned, I learned more on my first marathon about running a marathon than really anything else. Uh, and we did have a comment on Instagram that kind of ties into this, uh, photograph the magic. I have a feeling I'll be a one-time marathoner, mostly because of the time commitment of training. If I'm going to train that much, it seems like a good idea to do Dopey 2026. 20, what am I thinking? Thoughts and advice? We're not Obviously, going to talk you out of it. Yes. <laughs> um, but where was I going with that? I had a point. <laughs> oh. oh, anyways. Yeah, you're talking about, you know, being a one-time marathoner. Absolutely okay. Uh, I think Katie might have had the idea that she would be potentially a one-time marathoner after finishing your first one. But very quickly, especially as you're running these races, you are realizing that things are going on and you're trying to break down why these things are happening, how you should have done it differently. And then a day later, you're like, oh, I would have done this, this, and that differently. And then all of a sudden you're talking yourself into it again. Yeah. Um, I do want to go back to um, Jessica's comment here where she's talking about the Jeff Galloway method. Um, I love Jeff Galloway too. Um, I am for 10Ks and up, I do run walk. I have recently started being able to run a full 5K, which is very exciting for me. Um, but I would say, uh, especially if you're coming back from an injury um, or um, having a baby or all of the th things that can change our lives and our schedules, um, you know, don't maybe give your maybe give yourself you know until 2020 give yourself more time to come back from your injury and build your confidence as a runner on a shorter distance or a half um before committing to training for a marathon training or dopey we keep kind of going back between the two because the marathon aspect of dopey i think is the biggest hurdle but um the training can be intense and if you aren't um if you don't if you're not able to be consistent and you try to push yourself too hard i mean you you're just risking further injury and i would encourage you to feel really good about probably a half marathon distance before tackling dopey um which is another reason why we always encourage people to maybe not do dopey as their first race ever <laughs> or <laughs> I would Didn't say that for sure. Um, let's go back though. So Wendy shared, she's got two comments here and Wendy, we greatly appreciate you sharing your experience. <laughs> she DNF'd the marathon this year. Um, she said, I DNF'd at marathon in January. I made it to 21.5 and was extremely proud of myself. Although I didn't finish, it was still magical. 
My body gave out. Everyone afterwards was very supportive. And she goes on to say, I'm honestly seriously considering going back again next year to run it. And if I don't finish it, I know I gave it my all and had a great time. Um, and like I said, Wendy, I'm sure you took anything and everything that did go wrong and said, okay, these are the things I'm going to fix. Uh, great example before the marathon this year, I had a friend who was running the Walt Disney World Marathon, her first marathon. And she said, I am, I'm freaking out. How can I do this? Uh, she sent me her training plan. She's like, she basically nailed her training plan. She got sick and she like missed one long run. And she said, you know, some of my longest runs, I bonked at the end. I said, okay, well, we can work on that. You know, why did we bonk at the end? What did you eat before? What did you eat during the race? She's like, well, it was like a banana before and, you know, basically not enough fueling i said okay it's like first off you need to practice more fueling it's like whatever long runs you have left fuel more feel better towards the end um and that is great advice for the longer training sessions that you get in here um any single long run that i do over 10 miles i practice fueling i go through a lot of gels yep and that's it that when that brings us right back to that importance of training training consistently and making sure you hit long run steering training um because that's where you really get to practice these things that you wouldn't you know if you're a, a casual runner who does three four or five miles you know as your runs you're not going to experience the the needs and the feelings and um you know the need for fueling that you get when you hit those longer runs so Absolutely. We'll just take a second here to say uh, hi to Amy, Wilderness Runner. Uh, hi to Jason. Um, also hi to Tony. Thank you all so much for coming and joining the show. <laughs> I did want to, while we're talking about training, Eric, also someone who is frequently in our chats here, said last year was my first dopey first marathon. Hardest part is finding the time to train on the long runs around the holidays. However, it was so worth it. That is 100% another factor too. Um, now, luckily, once you hit, like, Chris, actual Christmas, you're starting your taper and you're on the decline. But all through Thanksgiving and the beginning of December, you are in your marathon build when times can be the craziest and the hectic. Yep. Um, and I work a, a retail job. I know. <laughs> and there's not a lot of daylight. So getting especially for folks who may, maybe don't feel safe out running outside in the dark or don't have, you know, good sidewalks or lights, like, it can, it can be challenging to to work out how you're going to get these in you might need to call in reinforcements to help you cook dinner watch your kids um, you might have to spend a lot of time on a treadmill or find a gym that you can go to you know um, but that's part of the challenge and that's part of why you we've said it before i've heard other people say it that the races themselves are almost the reward um the the challenge is the is getting in and training and and getting all of those consistent things done yes i mean absolutely the training and whether or not you know you believe you have the time commitment to do the training it's probably what we will spend the most time here talking about is training <laughs> for dopey and as i said kind of lumping the marathon itself into this too um another factor for whether you would want to do the marathon versus dopey training is their trainings are very very similar even when you look at things like the Galloway plan um Hal Higdon's plan uh Once Upon a Marathon has some great plans as well a lot of them the total mileage difference between doing dopey and just the marathon not a whole lot um yeah. sometimes within 10 miles total for your whole yeah. span and I think what that um what that should lead you to think about is, so do you want to, your time commitment training wise is gonna be very similar. So you could say, well, I'm gonna be training all, doing all of this running and training within 10 miles of Dopey, let's go ahead and go for Dopey. But maybe think about, okay, let's do all this training and do the marathon and see how it feels to do a marathon and focus on that and make that make that the goal of the weekend 
and then come back once you've conquered that marathon and the transition to doing dopey does not feel as tough because you've already gone through the training for a marathon and you know what that feels like. That's literally how I felt. I did um, the Jeff Galloway training for my first marathon and then I found Hal Higdon and I just liked the, um, you had a few more running days during the week and that worked really well for me and how I felt. Jumping from having done a marathon training to the next year doing a dopey training, even though I was running more with Hal Higdon, it did not feel quite as tough as doing that marathon training because I already had that experience. Um, it feels hard to do a marathon. Yep, I, that's true for anyone. <laughs> we had a friend who competed in the Olympic trials and even for him, he'll say, it's hard to do a marathon. <laughs> yeah. Um, it's like coach is, is who do that. Yeah, and kind of going back again, like I said, you have a lot of different options breaking it down. I think Jeff Galloway's is the most palatable, easiest entry. It is free. You can download it right off of Run Disney. You can check it off as you go or program it into your computer. Uh, definitely the most easy entry. He breaks everything down from, you know, walk run methods, timings that should work uh, for various paces. Uh, very, very beginner friendly. And can you scroll to the to the beginning? Absolutely. Of it? Or the, the calendar beginning. So one thing that's really good about Jeff Galloway is, is he really starts you from beginning. Um, your first Saturday long run day is three miles. Very, very doable for, for most folks who are getting into this. And then you kind of go up about a mile, mile and a half every two weeks or so. So that is really starting you as a base, but it also is, what did you say? It's like, how many weeks long? 30 uh, weeks 29 long? weeks. 29 weeks long. It's a long time. It starts in about the summer months. Yes. Now, looking a little bit more advanced, Hal Higdon has a variety of different marathon, and there is a specific dopey plan on there. You are looking at more mileage over the week. Mm -hmm. Um, but I like Hal Higdon's plan because the actual distance build is not linear. You kind of go, you build some distance, then you go back down a little bit and you continue to build. Uh, Hal Higdon's plan, I believe does not have you running a full 26 yeah. until you actually run the marathon. <laughs> Personally, <Which> I, like. <laughs> I was going to say, I am a proponent of that. Um, now you can... There are great benefits for doing it either way. The fact that you know 100% you've done a marathon before is great. Um, but I, mean, I don't know that that extra time on your feet during training is always going to be a positive right. for some And people. I believe when I've heard him speak about it, Jeff Galloway's reasoning for having you do the full 26 is mostly mental. It is mostly giving you the you know that you can do it aspect. Um, the reverse side of that is, especially when you get to distances, I would say over 15 miles, you're, um, you're really opening yourself up for opportunities to get injured <laughs> or, um, you know, uh, from overuse and, and things like that. I have had stress fractures before and they are not fun. <laughs> and when they derail your training, it is not great. And things like that happen when you, you know, are, are, suffering from overuse and not maybe necessarily like recovering enough so that would that was another reason why i liked switching to hal higdon especially before dopey because again that's an investment and i did not want to be hurt <laughs> going into that now like i said there are other options i'm going to kind of lump i mean there are other people who have plans out there i would say those are the two big ones look like we have a lot of hal higdon fans in the chat. Oh, yeah. Like I said, I used that for my first dopey second marathon. Um, since then, though, third biggest option I would say is working with some sort of coach or personal trainer. Um, there are plenty of them. There are plenty of them in the run Disney community. Mm -hmm. um, They're going to be the great people for helping you figure out, you know, what versions of these are right for you. Um, or they will build you a plan based off of your input as well. Um, because like I said, I don't think going the full 26 is necessary. I also think some of that though depends on your pace you're training at. Training at a 10 minute per mile pace 
is a lot different time-wise than training at a 16 mile pace and I do think that time on feet is a factor when you want to consider what your longest runs are going to be. Yes, absolutely. Um... Patrick says uh, Higdon went to 20 miles. That sounds right. And I, yep. I believe I either did that 20 miles. I might have capped it at 19. I, know I, I, I was very close to it. I know that. <laughs> I think I typically go somewhere around 22 or 23. Like I said, I work with a coach. I have not. I didn't do dopey this year. I have not trained for a marathon since last April. Yeah. Um, unfortunately, my marathon plans were derailed for me this year, and I just struggled to find something else to pick that and up honestly there's there's perfect dopies out there where we have we know a lot of them because we've met them and i think it's amazing but i think that's another thing to keep in mind is you don't have to do every single race challenge that disney offers every single time it comes around it's okay to take some years off take a break and then you know come back with a vengeance <laughs> and also you can be fully trained and not follow a training plan perfectly oh no yeah. one puts any of these out there expecting you to check every single box people get sick emergencies happen vacations happen you can be fully trained you know being 90 percent complete on this yep I've seen I've seen coaches, people who develop plans, uh, experienced runners. I've seen them say if you get any, I think a common range I see is between like eighty and ninety percent like compliance with your plan. But as you're having to maybe be flexible, um, learning which runs and workouts to prioritize if you do have to move things around. Um, a lot of times your your like simulation runs and your long runs are the ones you like want to make sure you get in so that you get that um, that distance training in. If you have to miss, you know, a speed workout or just an endurance run, you know, one of your weekdays, that's probably not going to hurt you quite as much, but getting that distance in so you learn what it feels like you know, it's a good priority. Absolutely. Um, if you are rewatching this, please go through the comments because They're I wonderful. cannot show you show them all, <laughs> but there is tons of great advice in here. I'm trying to hit all of the questions we can. Thank you guys so much though. Please keep up the chat, keep talking. Um, we're gonna circle back around to that one, I think. Okay. Talking about the mornings and oh, yeah. when we kind of go into actual racing. Um, again, lots of love for how Higdon planned. Tony says, agree, how Higdon's step back weeks are important. The best, best way to keep your body acclimated is to let it have periods of rest. Those step down weeks allow your body to accl acclimate safely. Yep. Again. And this is something that I've learned. A so I, one thing I've been doing the past year um, to help my running, but also just me as a person, is I've been doing a lot more strength training, which is something that we you should probably also mix in to your training plans. <laughs> Hundred percent. You that. do your strength. There you go. <laughs> but one thing I've learned as I, I, I just have learned more about the strength training world, which also applies to running, is a lot of the growth that happens, um, the the results and the benefits of your training comes during your rest times. That, that's what gives your body a chance to heal and then grow stronger. If you're if you're not giving yourself any rest days, any days off between your training and your strength training and all of that, your body's not getting a chance to rest and, you know, build itself up. Um, it's kind of like a plant growing. If you keep watering it all the time, it's just going to die. It's not going to bloom. <laughs> so, um, uh, make don't feel like more is always better <laughs> yeah and you know big point i'm spending all this time talking about training because training is the work you know <laughs> if you do the training you're going to do the marathon do dopey like you can absolutely do it all of the work is the months before you yep. know it's ever i think anyone anywhere will always reiterate that same thing for almost any like athletic event but yeah. you know putting that work in before allows you to go in much more confidently to these races and know i have the ability the endurance the will to finish this yeah so maybe to kind of wrap up what we're saying about training and then we'll we'll go back into it if we have some more questions a little later on but to wrap up kind of this section talking about training for dopey and can you can you commit to that and do it in 2025 
I would go and uh, look up the Jeff Galloway plan, look up the Hal Higdon plan or any other running plan that you might be interested in. Go ahead and pull it up before registration happens. Pull out your calendar or open up the calendar on the computer, your work calendar, and map out what what where those runs would fall and what it would look like and get an idea of if you can get those runs in during this year. Now things happen, things pop up, but probably know your big vacations. We know when the big holidays are. Um, you probably know when work's gonna be a little busier and um, see if you can, if all goes well for your year, get the runs in and help let, let that help you make the decision. Um, I have it mapped out on my, in my planner right now. So I know when things are gonna fall. I've already moved a couple around to make sure I get certain simulations in or certain long runs in when yeah you know we have trips and stuff planned so um you know help that or let that help you decide if it's something you can do in 2025 yes absolutely uh like i said if you guys have any more training questions i think we'll move into a little you got some more yeah, i got some more uh should you do dopey uh topics so keep throwing in the questions we will swing back around to them um but uh, there are a few other things i think you should consider when you're trying to decide if you want to do dopey um so one of the main ones i have is thinking about what your racing history is and what your run disney history is um and helping letting that help you manage your expectations and plans a little bit if you've never done a run disney weekend which i do recognize that probably a lot of people in our chat have done run disney weekends because you follow us on social media it's the only reason you know to be here but maybe if someone's watching on a replay this might you know uh resonate with them but run disney weekends can be very hectic they yep. can be stressful they can be unusual compared to some other types of races in you know it's a destination race for pretty much even for us like we have to be away from home overnight <laughs> and you know navigating the expo waking up at two in the morning to get to a race that doesn't start until between five and, five and six depending on what corral you're in like it's a lot there's a lot of logistics and doing that mixed with four days of racing ending in a marathon especially when you've never done a marathon before that is a huge deal. Wow. So maybe consider doing another challenge weekend first, doing wine and dine, um, or doing one race at marathon weekend and getting the lay of the land in a bit of a less stressful way. Um, that would be a huge recommendation, I think. And it just removes a layer of, of stress from a very stressful, you know, situation especially for your first time yeah absolutely and you know as we said there are other challenges in all the weekends springtime is a great challenge because you get the 5k 10k and 10 miler uh you're basically getting the three mornings without the marathon that is a great simulation mm -hmm. of am i gonna wake up after that 10 miler the next day and feel like running a marathon um hint the answer is almost always no <laughs> but we're gonna do it anyways yeah. Um, I will say, I remember um, Wine and Dine of 2022 would have been the last half I did before my, my first Dopey. And I remember, I ran really hard at that half. I remember waking up the next day being like, oh my goodness, in a month and a half, I have to wake up after this and run a marathon. And I did kind of freak out a little bit because I was like, oh no, I'm sore, <laughs> you know, <laughs> I'm tired. Now we did party at Epcot until 1 a.m. because it was wine and dine. But, um, you know, that is, that's something to think about if you've never experienced that feeling before. Yeah, Patrick says, Dopey 2024 was my first run Disney weekend and first marathon. Not the best plan for most people, probably, I agree. But I was proud, definitely helped having a strong running base though. Yeah. Yes, and that is going to be different for seasoned runners, runners who have marathons under their belt or ultra runners who are already used to running through the nights, you Absolutely. know, some of that is different. And 
marathon weekend though and the marathon great 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 first marathon absolutely that i have you know a marathon has been a goal of mine for many many years and i definitely went through periods where like oh i don't think i could ever do that to oh i still want to do it but now it's not a good time but i will say since i started running at disney in 2013 i knew that if i did a marathon my first one at least was going to be at disney like without a doubt um it's just like, it's such a great environment for new runners, first time marathoners, folks who maybe don't feel like they fit in as a runner, even though I think everyone can fit in as a runner, but I understand being a newbie that can, that's a learned <laughs> belief, I think. So yeah, it's a great, great first marathon. Well, and with that, the Run Disney community is so 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 welcoming mm -hmm. i think one of the best of the disney communities for that sure is, yes. yeah <laughs> um you know like i said at no point have we said no we don't think you should do this or you can't do this you know we are very much again in the uh party of you have to train for it you have to work <laughs> for it you absolutely can do it yes and i just want people to to always be prepared and, and not be scared. <laughs> and I am one, if, if you haven't watched enough of our videos and figured this out, is I like knowing about things before they happen. I like researching things within an inch of their life. And I just <laughs> want to be ready always. What do you got for us? Um, let's see, we've already talked about budget. We've already talked about training commitment. Um, oh, okay, so this is probably the last kind of point we'll end on and then we'll go back and look at questions. If you have anything else you want to discuss, we'll do it after this. But this um, this was a comment, actually, Kim Krupski left this, and it definitely coincides to a belief I have. Um, when you're deciding if you want to come and do any Run Disney weekend, but especially Dopey, in your dream mind, are you coming for a Disney vacation or are you coming for a running vacation? Um, because if you're coming and you only have five days at Disney, <laughs> and you want to go to the parks and you want to eat all the food and drink all the drinks and see fireworks every night, but then you also think you're going to wake up and run 48 miles over four days, maybe, maybe take a step back <laughs> and decide what you really want out of your trip. Um, Don't get us wrong. People do it. Plenty of people do it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> we are not in that party, and it is not what either of us would advise. And especially if it's your first dopey, which I think this is kind of, you know, where a lot of these are coming from. If you, you know, go hard at the parks and are running, it's not, it's not going to feel the, you're not going to feel the best you can. There's no way that you're going to, it's going to be the strongest you could be in that situation. Um, so maybe consider just doing one race and then having four days of relaxation, Disney park time, um, or, you know, I don't know where I was going with that. <laughs> well, oh, I'll put this different. comment up here that was asked a little bit ago. I feel like the biggest challenge is the time you need to get up four mornings in a row. Do you find it to be a challenge too? I mean, I consistently said, I think in multiple shows, two biggest challenges, waking up that early every morning and the marathon. Um, now the waking up that early in the morning can be managed. You know, when we did dopey last year, we were in bed early mm -hmm. every night. We were melatonin and we were asleep and I did not find waking up to be extremely difficult. Yes. Waking up that early is still its own challenge, regardless of whether you're running or not. Yeah. I did not find it as much of a challenge as I think a lot of people do, but we also have to consider that we do almost every Run Disney weekend, all the ones in Florida, so it's multiple times a year that we're practicing getting up at 2 a.m., and we've done it a lot, so we have our routine down. Um, if you're not as experienced with that, like, yeah, it's a challenge, and <laughs> for sure. With Dopey, though, too, and really any Run Disney race, there is an excitement, you know? Yeah. You are <laughs> up early for something really cool. And that is what I love about Dopey is, you know, some challenges that are, you know, only two races or if we're only doing one thing for a weekend is I get that, you know, one morning of that Run Disney high and then it's over or the two mornings. But Dopey, 
you do a 5k and you get to do it again for a 10k and then again for a half marathon and then again for a full marathon and i love that <laughs> dopey is like my favorite like time of year yeah you know i as you can tell yes you know so yes it is hard but it's exciting too um Jay Stickles asked, I would love to hear your thoughts on hitting the dread mill, dreaded wall this year. It's a dread mill. <laughs> um, this year at the 2024 marathon, I hit it at about 22 and never had before. Have you ever had that happen? Uh, I bonked really hard on my first dopey during the marathon. It was not my best training I had ever done by any means. It was the first marathon, my first marathon and marathon weekend back after shutdowns and all of that uh so i mean that was a lot of people's i think firsts coming back uh after that wine and dine uh but my training was not good and that was the thing that said i will never do this under trained again um as for hitting the wall again deconstructive process um fueling is almost the first thing i will always recommend re-looking at how often are you fueling how are you fueling before how are you fueling the night before uh, fuel, fuel, fuel is extremely important. Also, one of the reasons why I boxed during that marathon was because the gels I were using, I was having them, I'd had them for years, and all of a sudden during that race, I just did not have a stomach for those gels anymore. <laughs> have not had them since. Had to switch gels and everything. We threw away a lot of them because we had, we had stocked up during marathon trainings, and then, nope, they were not getting anymore. Um, and I didn't like them to begin with, so, yeah. Yeah, um, um, kind of on that, talking about park time, uh, I think this is kind of more of the usual is, you know, I did a mild afternoon AK, and the following Monday, partial day at MK, rest of the dopey time was making sure I could get through the races strong. Um, I usually do the parks days after 5K and 10K, but checking out early, so I had plenty of rest to prioritize. Prioritize. Yeah, um, plenty of people will go in, especially go in early to, like, magic, get your pictures, do your metal pictures, maybe have a lunch, and then dip out, relax. Yeah. Um, a lot of our friends in our crew are get to the hotel, eat, hot tub time, and... A lot of pool time on race weekends. Yeah. Hot tub time, pool time can be great. Yeah, and I would say, too, um... You know, don't feel like you have to go to a park every single day you're there. You can do some days. Um, if you're, I would say if you want to do like a good Magic Kingdom day uh, and you have to like pick what days you're going to go, you don't have an AP or something like that. Like make, we went to Magic the Monday after Dopey. Um, we've done, we've gone the Monday after several race weekends. And that's always a very fun time to go because a lot of people are there with medals and you see a lot of people taking pictures. You can take pictures with your medals, um, you know. It, it's a fun time to go so consider that you know might be better than trying to fit it in during the race time yeah that morning after is a lot of yeah, fun yeah it's so fun <laughs> and even that like day after marathon is pretty hyped there too yeah. but yeah yeah that morning after is a pretty well, good you time get a full night's sleep which is always great <laughs> that is also true as well uh, what else do you got for us? I believe that is all I have as far as notes go. I think I hit all the points I wanted to make. <laughs> um, but uh, let's see. I think we're looking at Instagram now to make sure we didn't miss anything too big. Yep. Um, if you guys have any more questions, feel free to ask them. We're just going to pull any other questions we have from Instagram or Facebook here. Uh, we'll hit this one here. This is a fun one. Best pre-race dinners to have on property that offer variety for multiple races. Oh, multiple yeah. days, which is, yeah, <laughs> you know, you basically have to be easy on your stomach four days in a row, especially if you are particularly sensitive. And it's tough because you could be, you know, very used to your at-home meals, <laughs> you know, that in you might not have uh, a kitchen wherever you are on Disney property. So you have to, you know, get a little creative. Um, one thing that I have started doing recently before some, mostly have, I haven't done a full sense dopey, but I've gotten really into doing, um, kind of basic like sub sandwiches, like tur a turkey sandwich. Um, do you get the bread, you get protein, it's mm. not fried, um, you can really customize it. So if that's something that you can either find on property somewhere, or, um, if you can, you know, order something from Subway or Publix or get a ride to a Publix and get something made. 
that's a really good option for at least one night, <laughs> maybe two. Um, yeah, you can put it in your fridge pretty easily. So something like that. Um, a lot of places on property have um, like a chicken you know, grilled chicken. I've ordered like kids meal grilled chicken and pasta before, which is pretty bland, but <laughs> appropriate. We've, uh, we Uber eated, uh, like Carabas or I think it was some, Carabas. something on that. Yeah. Just as you know, you know what you're going to expect out of something like Carabas or Olive Garden. Um, as for like on property places, um, oh my gosh, what is, uh, Wolfgang Puck? And down at Disney Springs, uh, pretty consistent basic pasta and pizza menu there. Uh, we've done that pre-race, had definitely a handful of times now. Yeah. Um, we've also done Marie and Enzo's. Um, one um one night um I wasn't feeling like going out somewhere, so my pre-race dinner was an apple, a bagel with peanut butter, a protein drink, and a pop tart. <laughs> <laughs> and I had a great, that was one of the wine and dines that I did like extremely well at, but that was what I ate before the half. Um, and it seemed to work. So, yeah. Um, I mean, there's plenty of places on property to get your like basic pasta style dishes. Yeah. Maybe here, here's what you should do is maybe check out, um, some menus and some places like before, beforehand and kind of get an idea, uh, plan it out see what's near whatever hotel you're staying at. But then also I think keeping in mind like Uber Eats and, and those other like meal delivery services are, are actually very nice. You might pay a little bit more than you normally would want to, but it's a really good way to, to get something reliable. If you do have a meal or some sort of transportation, there is a Buca in celebration, Buca de Beppo, which is like big family style pastas and uh, salads and stuff. Uh, we've, we've done, done that, that pre-race as well. Yeah, if you have like a, a few people who would want to like do that with you, it is a lot of food. Yeah, it's like, a, <laughs> it's like family style, but yeah. actually a pretty good option though. Yeah, absolutely. Um, Eric says, I found the wall around mile 24 to 25 this year. I blamed the, I blamed the rain for weighing that me down. Yeah, that rain does, uh, does make it tough and again, <laughs> Mental. <laughs> yes, very mental, but also that actually brings us back to a training point that we didn't mention, but I think is good, is um, take some opportunities to train in like less than ideal conditions when you have them available. Um, you know, in Florida, we get very rainy and um, I will try to go outside and run in the rain a few times. <laughs> um, I don't run in lightning because it scares me, but if it's just raining, I will go and I will practice and see what it feels like to be running while it's raining on you. Um, you know, we're in Florida, it's going to get hot. So we train outside in the heat in the summer so that we're used to it, um, and things like that. So don't only run on like those perfect days. Make sure you're getting out there on these. Yes. So they, times. And you know, we are not saying go out there don't and get, get dehydrated. <laughs> don't, uh, don't get heat exhaustion by any means. Hydrate fuel properly. Yeah. All of that. On those rough condition days, maybe slow down a little bit. Maybe walk a little bit more if you're a walker, you know, don't go crazy, but experience it. It's valuable. Yes, because, and we have historically have some, had some very hot marathons. Now we've had some very cold ones. It's all over the place. Yeah, you, you never know what you're going to get in January, <laughs> but you know, you kind of need to be ready for whatever. Uh, I would say being ready for the heat is definitely a good step. That's very hard for, I think most people who are not training in florida or in somewhere a hot yeah hot. environment um so you know you're training in this great cold weather all you know fall into winter and then you get down here and it's 80 degrees and full open sun <laughs> oh, yeah at mile you know 18 while you're going through a blizzard beach parking lot yeah yep that blizzard beach parking lot's my favorite place in the world no one's favorite place in the world. <laughs> no one Everyone hates it. I do have kind of a fond memory of it after Dopey because that was the point at which I thought maybe I'm actually going to finish this marathon. <laughs> it was the only point I pulled out the camera and I, I don't know if you remember that footage, but I was like, oh, hey, I haven't filmed anything this whole race before because I've been a little nervous about finishing, but now I think I have a chance. <laughs> yep. That is on our, we have the Dopey vlog from that yeah. year, which is kind of like what we did in between the races, but her race footage from the marathon is in there. 
which is what little there cool. was. <laughs> yes, and I mean we do have race footage from both of my dopies and all of that. Yeah. Um, let's see, are we missing any other questions on here? I don't think so. Huh. We're there's so many people here. I think this might be the most people we've ever had watching. So there's a lot of questions and stuff. We thank you so much for questions and advice um, and just being here with us and hopefully getting excited about signing up for races. Yeah, absolutely. What did, did you like the changes to the marathon course this year? We uh, didn't run it. <laughs> we did not run it, so we cannot speak to marathon did this you, year. Did you like the changes to the marathon course this year? Let us know in the comments below. Yeah, um, I would say overall, just from first look, no. Because I like all that pre-Epcot, and then I like with the highway start where you got to run by everyone because... They would usually still be starting or just about done when I would come through. So I'd get to see the fireworks again. You get to like wave and cheer for everyone. And I thought that was cool. Um, uh, good I, point I, here. They got to do a little bit of a different Magic Kingdom portion. I was jealous of that. You got to do the Tron portion. That is super cool. Uh, again, yep, cool running by Tron. Uh, totally forgot about that. That is super, super cool there. And it has been the trend of the last two years that the marathon does something a little bit different through Magic. Mm -hmm. Because, what, 2023, we got to go and go through the Adventureland yep. side as well. Which is cool. <laughs> Patrick says, most stressful thing about the whole weekend was the merch at the Expo the first day. Yeah, that is that one is... thing to keep in mind because everyone who's there, are a lot of people who do the challenge, and everyone who's doing the challenge has to go to the expo on the first day. So it is probably the most crowded expo you may experience. I think that's the only time we've ever waited in a huge long line to get our bibs to. Yeah, that. Um, yeah, consistently, dopey expo day is the craziest of them. I mean, it's. A lot of people doing the challenge yeah. during that weekend. It does make up the majority of the marathon runners, majority of the half marathon runners. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, just be prepared that first Wednesday when that expo opens. That is a wild time. Dopey merchandise typically sells out very, very quickly. It is a lot of fun. I would consider pre-ordering some stuff if it's your first one and you want to make sure you have something. Yep. That is actually we a great we, tip. We don't pre-order a lot of stuff ourselves. Every so often we'll do something, but for that, especially which first one, if you think it might be your only one, I would recommend doing it just so you have something. Yeah. Yeah. You can, I, I don't want to say you can't go wrong pre-ordering because the pre-order system's a little bit weird. I wish you could return stuff you didn't want. <laughs> right. Yeah. They don't do returns. You don't get your discount. Um, they do typically have like a size exchange for clothing items, which is useful. Um, but then sometimes like things are in bundles and if you just want one thing in that bundle, you're either gambling that it's gonna be there or you're paying for this whole bundle and either keeping things you didn't want or trying to part them out. Yeah. Um, but, but that's still, why I say like if it's your only one, if you're not spending tons of money on bundles for every single week weekend that you do, like true, it might be worth the, the slight cost and convenience. Yeah, Steve says, runners get to MK quicker, so it's easier to see the castle while it's still dark. It is very true. Blake says Shout hi. Out to Blake. Say hi, hi to Blake. <laughs> um, yeah, I think that is all I got. If we don't have any more questions here, I think we answered pretty much everything that came up in our other social media. Um, again... We are not saying that you cannot do it, should not do it. Yes, we are um, ending on this note of if this is something that you want to do, like we highly encourage you to do it. Um, just do it smart, plan to train, and actually train. <laughs> yes. Um, and, you know, we want you to do it, but we want you to enjoy as much of it as you can. Um, I have a last minute one. Oh. Um Kind of going back to training uh, shoes, though. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you haven't gotten fitted for shoes at an actual running store. Go and do that. Uh, marathon training, as we said, more days, more mileage, more intense. Um, you could definitely get away with, like, half marathon and below training with only one sh pair of shoes or one style of shoes. I would say if you're doing marathon training, 
have at least another pair of shoes, even if it's the same pair, just to rotate the foams is very good for the longevity of it. Also for Dopey doing back-to-back -back races, have multiple pairs of shoes with you um, to train out for the same, you know, foam reason, but also for your simulation times where you're doing back-to-back -back runs, um, if you choose to do those. And um, again, this goes to training, trying your shoes, getting to try different types of um, like runner apparel, different types of shorts and shirts and see what feels good, running belts, vests, if you want to use a running vest, like training is important because that's how you figure a lot of this stuff out before you yep. get to the race. So another uh, point in the please actually train <laughs> yep. column. <laughs> yeah, just, you know, take a little bit to talk about gear. Yes, I mean, I, I have a ton of shoes in my rotation now. Uh, sometimes I rotate some in, take some out. Yeah. And you could do multiple, like he has different styles and types of shoes and that works really well for him. I have one style of shoe. I have a couple different pairs that are like active, um, but that's really all I need right now. So, you know, you know, you can figure out what works best for you. As long as you are not getting injured and it, the shoes work for you, yep. you know, not every and, shoe works for everyone. And get fitted and your shoe, you know, a good running shoe should not have a break-in period. It should feel good from the first point. So if you're feeling like your running shoe, you need to break it in before it feels good. It's probably not a good shoe for you. I see that come up a lot with new runners and I just like, I firmly believe that if you're properly fitted for the shoe, you don't need to break it in. <laughs> Yes, we uh we love talking about shoes. Yeah. Uh, one question we actually get a lot that I haven't seen on here is people ask about using like a running vest or carrying hydration. Uh, I personally don't. However, I am not out there as long as others. Katie, however, does yeah. typically train with a vest. Yes, I do, especially for longer um races, like longer running. Uh, longer training runs is what I wanted to say. I don't think I ran, I did not use a vest during the actual race uh, because I was familiar with how often Disney had the water stations and stuff. And I knew that that would work for me, at least at Disney. Um, but I do love the vest for longer training runs because it helps me be able to run different places and switch up the view without having to circle back around to wherever, you know, our car is or the house to get water and things like that. So it's very useful. Yeah. It gives you lots of and pockets. Wendy says, I carried a water bottle and wanted to chuck it away so many times during the marathon, but it carried my fuel. Um, again, train with it. No. Can I carry this with you? Um, it's hard. And sometimes it's, again, you know, trying things, trying to find the right vest or the right uh, bottle or belt that is going to work for you. Um, and sometimes things just don't work for you. And then you just do have to plan on, okay, here's the hydration points that I'm working with. Again, Disney does a pretty good job offering what you need on the course. Um, I would, again, always advocate for more fuel than what they're offering for sure. But water-wise, I do think you can, for the most part, get enough water just from what, what run Disney offers. Yeah, and they do water and Powerade. I don't think, I think they usually don't do Powerade at the very first stop, but then they usually do Powerade at all the ones after. There have been situations in the past where different stops have run out of things for further back runners, um, which isn't, I would say it isn't the norm, but sometimes it happens, especially on hotter days. Um, it's hard to predict, so. Sometimes you have to roll with the punches there, but they will, I think, try to bring stuff out because they Disney really does not want people a bunch of people passing out on their watch. Yeah, so. absolutely. Um, Jay Stickles asks, "Are we doing Dopey this year?" Yes, our intention is to do Dopey yeah, this year. Try. It killed me to miss Dopey last year. I'm not gonna well, lie. We got to go to Disney. We did. Yes, a hundred percent worth it. Um, but yes, but we will Dopey not be going is to Disneyland next year. exactly. <laughs> Yeah, I will 100% do Dopey over Disneyland pretty much every or any year yes. at this point. Uh, um, like I said, I love Dopey. Yeah. Favorite time of the year. I love the time with the people. <laughs> I love all the different races. It is just phenomenal. Marathon weekend is just, I think, the best atmosphere. Um, well, all the weekends are great. They all have their own little niche and vibe. Yeah. Um, I just... Marathon weekend, I think, always kind of feels the most uh, 
the most like another like a different running environment yeah plus um, it's so long since all the races are on different days like you get it's it's you really get almost like immersed in yes. the world when you're there for so long whereas like we did when we did marathon weekend this past year we we only in and out did the half marathon and it was like so quick <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And the race was shortened, so it was even quicker. Yeah. Uh, typically, though, you know, this because this weekend's longer, this is when we do, like, meetups. Uh, you know, we get to hang out after all these races and get to see all these people. Yeah. It is just the most fun. So, yes, we will be we'll there be for Dopey this year. Yeah. We are absolutely looking forward to it. Um, if someone, this marathon yeah. weekend has the best energy. Someone also asked if we were doing Halloween, and we are doing Halloween. Oh, I year. totally missed right that. Here. Oh, yep. Are you doing <laughs> Yeah. Halloween, it'll be my first Disneyland visit. Yes, uh, we did want to do Halloween this year. Again, no plans on Disneyland next year. Um, we have some other trips that we want to do, we and do. like we st we're both still working full time and have PTO to take into consideration, money to take into consideration, and there's just there's other things we want to do. Um, we will definitely be back at Disneyland, you know, in the future just undetermined right now as far as when we'll go back and run there. But, um, you know, we love Ren Disney, so, you know, it's always going to be in the cards for us. Absolutely. Well, that is probably as good a place as any before we run too, too long here and we intimidate everyone trying to rewatch with the length of this. Oh, yeah. If you are rewatching, though, and you have any additional questions, please feel free to drop them in the comments or you can uh, mess DM us on Instagram at mouse.gen. Uh, we can usually pretty much get right back to you there. Uh, but for everyone watching live, re-watching, uh, please, if you don't already, like, subscribe, ring the bell, all of that fun youtube -y stuff. And to our live group who have been super awesome tonight, definitely our most successful yes. <laughs> live stream we've ever done. Uh, everyone asking questions and chatting with each other. Like, again, you guys, the community, um, everyone that we've met through doing this is just truly amazing and touching that anyone would take an hour out of their day to Hang out watch us. us yeah sit here and yeah. talk to a camera for an hour is so so touching <laughs> um so thank you all so much again and to those again re-watching um thank you all for being here supporting us and if you are planning on registering for Dopey Marathon or any other run Disney race for the matter, good luck at registration and we will see you there. Thanks.